Now it's going to go through a partitioning process. Um, this might look a little bit scary, but, but it's actually not going to do anything at all to your hard drive. Um, uh, what the, what the uh, uh, VMware's done is they've just created a big uh, disk file, and it fools uh, Ubuntu into thinking that that disk file is an actual hard drive. Um, so this, is, this shouldn't be of any concern. Um, it, it defaults to this logical volume management. I don't think you really need that for, for um, setting up this virtual machine here. So I would arrow up to just the guided use entire disk option. Uh, press enter. Um, there's only one disk, two partitions, so press enter on that. Um, it will display what it's going to do. Um, it defaults to no just to give you the opportunity to change your mind if you were installing this on a on a full live uh, server, but um, uh, this is pretty much perfunctory, so just uh, tab over to yes, press enter. It will start uh, formatting the partition. That takes just a few seconds. It'll start installing the base system. Um, this part now um, takes about five to ten minutes depending on your processor, uh, maybe a little bit longer. So I'm going to pause the recording and we will come back uh, when it's over. And we're back. Uh, now it's going to want a full name for the user. Um, usually you enter a first and a last name here. I'm just going to go with uh, user1. Now it's going to want the actual login ID. Um, it'll, it'll pick something from, from what you entered previously. Uh, I'm going to just leave this at user1. Password. Choose something simple um, or write it down. If you f put in a password and you forget it, um, it's easier just to install a new virtual machine than to try to recover it. So uh, pick your password wisely and then confirm the password. Um, it asks if you want to encrypt your home directory, um, depending on what you're doing with this. Um, you can if you want to. It defaults to no. Um, there isn't any particular reason to that I can think of. Um, but you have the choice. Um, so make your choice and then press enter. If you need a HTTP proxy, you probably know that you need an HTTP proxy. So if you don't know the answer to this question, then the answer is probably that you don't need one. So uh, press the tab key to continue and go on. Um, if you do need a proxy, then that would have been the time to enter it. That's some more configuring. I'm going to um, uh, pause the recording here again. All right, we're back. It's asking if you want to um, uh, install security updates automatically, uh, probably for this system and for this use. Um, uh, it defaults to no automatic updates, and that's probably a good choice. Uh, so I suggest leaving it at no automatic updates. Just press Enter to continue. Now it's asking if you want to install some optional software, and this may very well be why you're interested in experimenting around with this uh, application to begin with. So uh, any of these can be added later. Um, it's pretty easy to do it, but if you know you need them, it's easiest to do it now. Uh, I'm going to suggest that um, uh, LAMP and the OpenSSH server uh, are, are two great options to install right off the bat. Now on this screen, um, don't press enter right away. Um, you need to arrow up and down uh, to whichever selection you want, and then press the space bar um, to highlight that. You can see that little asterisk selection character. So do that um, until you get all the ones that you want checked. Uh, again, I'm suggesting LAMP uh, and OpenSSH. Uh, LAMP uh, gives you the Apache web server, uh, MySQL, um, PHP, um, and the OpenSSH allows you to easily transfer files between your host computer, uh, your desktop computer, and this virtual machine. Uh, so those are both great options. When you're ready, press the tab key to highlight continue and then press enter. It will begin installing those uh, uh, applications, and if you selected LAMP, it's going to ask for a password for the MySQL root user. Uh, you can leave that blank, um, in which case you'll have to um, uh, add a password later, uh, most likely. Uh, so I'm going to add one now. Again, um, uh, make it simple or write it down uh, so you don't have to recover it later if you forget it. And it asks you to repeat the confirm the password. Um, it's now going to finish up the installation. Um, I will pause the recording again and come back in a few minutes. 
All right, we're back. Now, um, if you've uh, installed older versions of the software, this may be a new one for you. Um, and it's also pretty much um, uh, irrelevant for the virtual machine installation. If you were installing this on a, on a physical server rather than inside a, a virtual machine, then um, it's going to let you know whether uh, it found another operating system uh, and basically give you the option to dual boot or um, uh, whatever. Um, but this is not really applicable to uh, the virtual machine. Um, so it defaults to yes. Go ahead and just select the default, which is yes. Uh, it'll spend just a few seconds finishing up. And then it's going to ask you to um, um, press enter to, to reboot. Um, you don't really need to remove the installation media. Uh, try to unhook that ISO file. Um, uh, that's going to be fine. Uh, so just go ahead and press enter and the machine will reboot. And you come to a login prompt. So enter the uh, login um, ID that you set up. Uh, when it comes to the password, um, uh, Linux Unix systems don't echo password characters, so uh, no asterisks are going to appear when you start typing. Uh, it just kind of sits there. So go ahead and enter the password that you assign, and um, you won't see anything echo. That's the way it should be. Um, and uh, press enter, and then um, you should see this go ahead and reboot if you enter the password correctly. And now we're down at the command line. Um, keep in mind that the server is a, a command line environment. Um, does not come with a graphical interface. Uh, servers are used as web servers, DNS servers, and so on. Um, uh, there are tools you can get to administer them that are graphical, but by default they just have this um, uh, command line here. Uh, if you've installed LAMP server, you can make sure this is working. Um, there's a command you can type in ifconfig. Um, and it will display an internet address if everything is working correctly, your IP address. Uh, simple enough to test this installation. Um, simply fire up your browser here. All right, now what I'm going to do, let me pull this down so you can see both screens at the same time. Uh, I'm going to enter this IP address into this browser. And assuming I've done that correctly. And you can see that um, it loads up the default web page um, for the server that we've just installed. Um, now, that won't work if you didn't install the LAMP server uh, or have installed Apache, because then there won't be a web server there. Uh, but if you did install LAMP, that's a good way to just do a quick check uh, and make sure everything works. Uh, at this point, you have a couple of options. Uh, you can either suspend the machine. You can just press this pause button up here. That'll hold it in kind of a state of suspended animation. If you actually do want to um, um, uh, shut it down, uh, you can do um, sudo shut down, minus, and then a capital P, not a small p, now. Um, sudo is a super user command um, that um, allows you to execute um, uh, what they call root level uh, privileges. Um, and um, uh, it may need to enter a password there. Um, and then that simply shuts down the machine. Uh, you can power it on again um, just by clicking this button here. Um, so I think that's about it for now. Um, good luck with that, and um, uh, have fun.